we, we simplified the title a little bit for Did you. Did you? Yeah. Oh, nice. Right. Uh, <laughs> so I'd like to thank Sages for the opportunity to present our work. So this study, I'd also thank uh, Sages for supporting our work. So hospitals and surgeons are under pressure to continuously measure and record their patients' outcomes. With budgetary constraints, this must be done in an affordable manner. Current measurement tools such as NISQIP are expensive, costing between $10,000 and $29,000 a year, not including the cost for staffing. And some studies have raised questions about the validity of these metrics. As such, there's a need for a better quality tool, a comprehensive measure that is applicable to multiple surgical procedures. In order to meet these needs, our group developed the HARM score, standing for hospital stay, readmission, and mortality. Each category has a point value that is added up to create the HARM score for each patient. Hospital stay has six categories based on a normal uh, distribution for colorectal procedures, both emergent and elective. And readmission and mortality are binary variables with one point for readmission and five points for mortality within six days. For example, a patient who's discharged alive plus or minus readmission would have a score from zero to six, and a patient who died in the hospital or on readmission could have a score anywhere from five to 11. And this builds on prior research that we did with the HARM score. Initially, we looked at about 81,000 colorectal patients using the California inpatient database, um, and this showed that um, in the colorectal population, increasing harm score correlated with patient outcomes and overall complications. And then we looked um, at the, uh, uh, sorry, that was with the Premier database. Then we looked at the uh, California inpatient database, looking at um, a wider range of uh, populations with hepatobiliary, upper GI, and colorectal patients. And again, this showed that increasing harm score correlated well with um, postoperative complications. So we wanted to build on that by looking at the um, Vizient clinical database with applying the harm score there. Um, the Vizient database, some of you might know it as the University Health System Consortium, so it looks at just academic medical centers and their affiliates. We wanted to evaluate the harm score's ability to serve as a performance measure across a large surgical population and how the harm score correlated with complication rate and severity. So this was a retrospective review of the Vizient database from 2011 to 2015. Procedure classes included hepatobiliary, upper GI, colorectal, and hernia. The patients were identified by ICD-9 CDM diagnosis codes with surgical uh, MSDRG codes. So the harm score was calculated for each patient in the facility. The scores were uh, less than two, two, three to four, and greater than four, which is what we've done with prior publications. Uh, the primary outcome was correlation with the harm score, um, with overall harm score with postoperative complications, and then the harm components with postoperative complications. So demographics, there were over 500,000 patients included in the analysis. Uh, the majority of patients had a harm score of less than two. In each category, the majority of patients were age 31 to 74, and the majority were a uh, white race or ethnic background. Um, most patients were female except in the harm score less than uh, greater than four category, and commercial and Medicare insurance were most common um, overall. So for harm scores of less than two, uh, hepatobiliary was the most common procedure, um, and the length of stay was just over three days. Uh, for harm scores of two, um, colorectal was the most common procedure, and the mean length of stay increased to six days. For a harm score of three to four, um, again, colorectal was most common. The mean length of stay increased to eight days. And then with a harm score greater than four, again, colorectal was just about half the procedures and the mean length of stay increased to 15 days. So um, when we looked at the just as odd ratios for uh, complications, um, in the top half of the table, you can see elective admissions here. Um, and you can see that with increasing harm score, there's both an increase in percentage of patients um, who had a post-operative complication and increasing risk-adjusted odds for complications. In the bottom half of the table for emergency admissions, you can see that the same trend stays true with increasing percentage of, of patients with post-operative complications and adjusted odds for complications. So this data here shows a breakdown for complication of odds of complications by specialty. Uh, this data is not risk-adjusted for hospital and patient factors, although the trends that I'll show in the next couple slides um, 
are similar for the risk-adjusted and non-risk-adjusted data. Uh, we chose to show non-risk-adjusted here because if we're talking about a simple score, you shouldn't have to do all the risk adjustment for all those um, other comorbidities. Um, so for upper GI patients in both the uh, elective in the elective and emergent cases, you can see that with increasing harm score, there's increasing odds of a postoperative complication. Um, additionally, in hepatobiliary cases, uh, you can see that again adjusted uh, increased odds for postoperative complications with increasing harm score. Colorectal is the same, and hernia procedures as well. So then we looked at the uh, elective procedures and sub subdivided the complications into major and minor. So clavian dindo grade one and two are minor complications, and clavian dindo grade three or four are major complications. So in the top half of the table for minor complications, you can see that there are increasing odds of complications with increasing harm score in each surgical specialty. In the bottom half of the table, again, for major complications, you can see that this trend is even more pronounced for harm score greater than four. So this table here shows the emergent procedures. Uh, again, this is not risk-adjusted data. For patients who have um, uh, minor complications, grade one and two, we don't see the same trend. Um, you can see that harm score greater than four doesn't really increase with what we had seen with the other slide. Conversely, for major complications, for harm score greater than four patients, had a large increased odds ratio for major postoperative complications. As the most severe complication determines the clavian dindo score, it might be that these patients are having major complica minor complications, but they might be masked by the grading of only the major complication. In this slide, we show the mean harm score by hospital. So this shows that you can compare hospitals, and they're not all going to have the same harm score. So um, again, if this scoring metric had a similar score for each hospital, then it wouldn't be a very effective metric across facilities. And you can see that there's quite a wide range of mean harm scores. So in conclusion, the harm score overall correlated well with increasing odds of postoperative complications. It was able to discriminate between different facilities. And it's a robust tool that's been compared using uh, clinical community hospitals and also academic med medical centers to look at multiple data sets and shown it's increased or correlated well with postoperative complications and outcomes. So in summary, it's a simple, affordable quality metric that can be adopted across multiple surgical specialties. Thank you.